Welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. Today, I am really excited. I am building a new CNC table to complement the one that I already have in the shop. Now, I am going to be adding drawers to this one in another video, but today I want to show you how to build this super easy CNC table. Let's get started. The first step in this process is to take the 4x8 sheet of plywood and cut it down to a more manageable size. Now this is a 3 quarter inch thick cabinet grade plywood. In fact, it's nothing fancy. In fact, the quality is a little bit on the poor side. But at any rate, I'm cutting this to a size so that I can cut all the runners and legs. By using the panel saw, it's a lot easier to be able to manage the plywood because I can just roll this plywood in and set it on the panel shawl and it's a whole lot easier than trying to set this plywood up on the table and then use the table saw to be able to cut these rough lengths. With this plywood cut now, I'll take this smaller section over to the table saw and now it's a lot easier to be able to work with. At the table saw, I'm going to cut these down to 4 inch wide pieces. And this will be used for the runners as well as for the legs. And I'm going to cut enough of them so that I'll be able to do this all at one time. And I'll have a little bit of plywood left over. To make this 4 inch by 4 inch post for my table leg, there's several different ways that I can do the joints. One of the ways is just to cut it on a 45 degree angle and nail them together along with the glue and that would hold them. But I really don't like that type of joint. To me it's just not strong enough. Another way is to be able to take the board and put a little rabbit on here. And that would be 3 eighths of an inch and then the 3 quarters of an inch deep. And the other board would just fit right in here. And of course the rabbit on the other side would fit in there. That's the method that I'm choosing to do because that way I have to mill these two boards because this would be notched over here and that of course is gone. See that would be milled on this board and the same way over here. This one would be cut in And that would be done. One board right here. This board would be three and a quarter inches. And this would make up the other three eighths and three eighths here for the total of the four inches. That way, all I have to do is these are just square cut at the three and a quarter, and I just mill these two boards. To me, that's the simplest way. The other way that I could do it is mill each one of them where this would be the three quarters of an inch down and then the next board would have to be milled to join into that and I would have to mill one end on each of my four boards. I don't want to go to that much trouble. To me I can just work with these two boards and do it that way. So that's the way that I'm choosing to do it. And there's many other ways to do this joinery. This is just one way that I have chosen to do it. Now I have the height of the saw blade raised up my 3 eighths of an inch. And I also have from the fence over to the outside edge of the blade is my 3 quarters of an inch. Now I'm going to run all my boards through this direction first and then I'll change the setting to be able to cut the remaining of the rabbit joint. So I'm going to need eight pieces cut this way and with everything set I can just run this through the saw the first time and then from there I'll just split the board around and run it through again. And this is a very simple uh, joint to be able to make 
but yet it's also very strong and it works real well for this table. And I've used this on the first CNC table that I did and I've never had a problem at all with this. So I'm very happy with this type of joint. Now off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and run the rest of these. I'm not gonna bore you with just this simple straight cut. Now I've changed the setting on the blade. The blade is now set at three quarters of an inch high and from the fence over to the inside edge of the blade is three eighths of an inch. This will allow me to complete cutting the rabbit joint. As I said earlier, this is a very easy joint to do. Now I chose to use a table saw to cut this. I could have used a router and used the router table to be able to cut this. But again, there are many ways to do it. But as you can see, this joint looks very good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of these. And no, I'm not gonna bore you with having you sit here and watch me do all of these cuts. Now I wanted to get a close up so that you could see how this goes together. These were just a straight cut blocks that were three and a quarter inches. The overall width of this is four inches and this is just cut with the um, rabbit joint in just this one end to be able to work and then the same thing on the other side. This actually makes being able to do and go through this process very quick. All I need to do now is glue and nail it together and then I'll round over the edges. Now the last part that I need are these 4x4 four four blocks. These are going to go into the end of the legs and this will support the wheels that I'm going to put on the table. Now this process is done the same way. I'm cutting this with that same setup only this time I'm putting the rabbit joint on all four sides. Now this was all done at the same time, so I didn't have to change the setup of the saw. I was just able to run the long boards through for the legs and then come back and do these as well. So this works real well and it's just done with that same one setup. Now before I glue this together, I wanna to show you this one more time. I've got the leg put together and I wanna take this little block that goes into the end and that just slips right in. Now this supports the wheels of the uh, whole table and this works extremely well. To glue these legs together, I'm using the original type bond glue. I want to make sure that I have ample amount of glue on this so I want good coverage on both of these surfaces. Now the nails that I'm using is a 1 inch 18 gauge nail and I actually switched over and started using a brad staple again it was one inch because the staples actually hold better but for this first leg it got the nails now these rabbit joints actually make assembly very very easy but it helps to hold everything nice and square With the first one nailed in place, all I need to do is just rotate it over, put glue on the second piece, and repeat the process. Very, very easy to do. And what's really nice about this whole process, this last piece, just put glue onto both sides of it, drop it into position, and it's already aligned. There's really no other alignment that you have to be able to do. Just make sure that the ends are even and you're ready to nail it in place. Can't get much easier than that. Next, I'll go ahead and put the glue on this little end cap and put it into place. And this first leg will be done. Okay. A few nails to hold it in place. And I only have three more legs to do. This one is finished. Now that the glue is dried, and before I use the router to do the round over, I like to be able to sand the legs completely smooth. In my trim router, I have set up a quarter inch round over bit. I'm gonna use this to be able to put the edge on all four sides of my leg, as well as the end cap. 
This step is not absolutely necessary, but it really does make for a much nicer looking leg. And it doesn't take long to be able to put this edge onto the uh, four legs. Once all the router work is done, it's back to sanding one final time. Now this is going to be my final sanding. I won't do this anymore and this will be paint ready. And yes, I do take a little spackling compound and fill all the nail holes. It just makes for a nicer looking job. Now that the legs are finished, I'm taking the cross members that actually support between the different legs and I'm using pocket hole screws. Yes, that's right. Again, I could use a number of different types of joinery, but I'm choosing to use the pocket holes because it's so fast and so easy and it works extremely well. Again, I said this was going to be a very simple and easy to build table for the CNC machine. Now after I cut all the holes, yes I do vacuum up the sawdust. I've had a number of people say and ask about the shop and how it's clean and I wanted to be able to say yes I do. I vacuum all the time to try to keep down as much of the sawdust as possible. That's one of the really nice things about having the central vacuum system. Now to attach these boards to the legs, I'm measuring up two inches from the bottom of the leg itself. Now you can do this at any height. I'm just choosing to use two inches. On the top of the table, I'm actually doing this flush with the top of the leg. Now I do not want this board at the very edge, so I've raised it up three quarters of an inch and that is going to recess this back from the edge of the leg. Again, I want this really easy to do. I could have had this recess any distance that I want, but three quarters of an inch works, and it's, again, very easy to do. And the next thing, I just repeat the process on the other side of the board. And again, I'm just aligning this to the top edge of my leg, putting the two screws in, and again, don't forget, I'm using that three quarters of an inch spacer to be able to have this board recessed back from the front edge of the leg. Now that everything in place, I just screw in the screws. Now I measured up from the bottom two inches. I'm going to put my three quarter inch piece in here. Put that right into position where it belongs. Make sure it's right on my two inch line. And then I'm going to slip two screws in here. Now the torque settings that I'm using, this is just from experiments. I have the drill sit on 1 and 14. Your drill may or may not use those settings to be able to work, but that works real well for this drill. I'm going to go ahead and add the wheels at this time. And all I'm doing is just centering the wheel onto the bottom of the leg and then just screwing it into place. And now it's time to go ahead and put the other cross members in position. And again, I'm doing the same thing. I just slide over my three quarter of an inch spacer, put my board in position. Now this is part of the top of the uh, leg, so it's flush. And then I just screw it in position. I hope you can see just how easy it is to build a table this way. And I've used this design not only for my first CNC table, but I've also used this basic design in other tables that I have built around the shop. To be able to join the face frame together, there wasn't really sufficient room to be able to have the pocket screws that hold the face frame and to be able to attach it into the column. So I decided to go on some very old technology. <laughs> I wanted to use a corrugated fastener. This is what it looks like. And this is used to nail into the face frame and hold it in place. And it's corrugated because of how it looks when you look at it on its edge. 
I'll put my hand up there. Maybe you can see that better. Okay. And I'm curious, leave me a comment down below if you're familiar with corrugated fasteners and if you've ever seen them or used them in a project that you have worked on. In addition to this, this is something that I used back in the 70s when I was building cabinets and I actually had a nail gun that would shoot these into the cabinet face frames. It was a great gun. Too bad I don't have it any longer. To use the corrugated fastener, all you have to do is just hold the two pieces together and then nail it in. And because of the design, it helps to pull the two pieces together. Again, leave me a comment if you've ever used a corrugated fastener before. That nailed them together. And if I flip this over to show you the front side, that's a nice tight joint. And you can, this is how many years ago we used to build cabinets before there was such a thing as pocket holes. Now it's time for a mixture of the old and the new. To attach this face frame to my legs, I'm using the pocket hole screws to be able to do that. Now I'm going to be building the drawers and the rest of this framework to be able to support the drawers in an upcoming video. But right now, I want to be able to get this cabinet finished because as you might guess, my CNC machine has arrived. So here you go. This is the first look at the frame structure of my new CNC table. Now this is before paint, of course, but I want to be able to show you how it looks before I put the top on it and before I paint it. This does work extremely well and it has supported my CNC for the last three years as well as other tables that I have built using this method. This is easy, simple, and it works great. Now here's a quick look at the table after I painted it. Now you cut the MDF top. I'm not sure that this is going to be the final size, but I wanted to be able to let you see what it looked like. I hope you enjoyed this video and consider building your own CNC table. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.